Forget everything you know about heat pumps in the cold. For years, misconception and myths have basically put this technology into the dark and from widespread adoption. In this video, we're gonna be showing you why heat pumps not are just incredible things in cold climates and cold weather, but as plummet, you know, temperatures plummet, they are superior and absolutely in remarkable systems in what they can do and how other countries in cold climates are using heat pumps as well. We're gonna be talking about how they work, what they do, but more importantly, I have a heat pump. I've been using it for over 12 months. And if you wanna see what it's been like to have a service on it, what it's been like to run it, what the results are like after 12 months, then I will be having videos special guest from Octopus Energy coming up to look at the heat pump, Cozy 6 heat pump I've got, then click subscribe, click the notification bell, and you won't miss those exclusive videos coming soon. So many believe that when the mercury drops, the heat pumps just don't work, and that is simply not true. We're gonna be looking at how they work, but more importantly, if you want a heat pump just like me, then go to evnick.com forward slash heat pump, where you can fill in your name and email address, and as long as those name and email address match the octopus quote you'll be doing you will receive a 100 pound visa gift card when you complete your job of a heat pump now it doesn't have to be a cozy six it can be a daking heat pump from octopus energy now we need to unpack the magic of a heat pump but let's do it in reverse because it's much easier to deal with a heat pump that most people are used to seeing every single day and aren't actually aware it's a heat pump so the most common heat pump that every single person has in the house is a fridge and a fridge is cold on the inside, and a freezer, even better, is even colder on the inside. And they work by using a heat pump re recirculation valve system. It works exactly the same way, and what it does, it works in reverse. So it's pulling out the cold, and then putting the cold inside, and then the, throwing the heat out the back. That's why you have this really hot grill at the back. Now, as you all know, your fridge is cold all year round. Even when the inside of your house is 30 Celsius and your kitchen may be 30, 35 Celsius, the inside of your fridge is still held at the cold temperature. It's exactly how a heat pump works, but we're gonna be doing it in reverse. Now, in reverse, obviously, we could have outside temperatures that are minus 10 Celsius. And you might go, well, that's below freezing, there's cold, there's no heat to extract, but that's not how temperature works. In fact, true zero is minus 273 Celsius. So there's a lot of heat between minus 10 and 273 that can be physically extracted uh, from the air. There is, there is retained heat even at those really cold temperatures. Now in the EU and Europe, we're very unlikely to see below minus 15, 20 Celsius. And also the gas, the refrigeration gas used is the limit of how cold a heat pump will work. But the gases chosen for the EU and Europe are more than sufficient to deal with the weather that we get over here. And in fact, if you're not too sure if heat pumps work, go and ask the Swedish. So where does this myth come from? Well, like all technologies, in the early days, there was a grant, which was even better than the current grant, and a lot of bad actors got involved installing heat pumps, and like most bad actors, didn't install the systems correctly, and that resulted into people believing that heat pumps weren't working. Now, what was mainly the cause is either them not installing a big enough heat pump. Now, there is a problem with installing a heat pump that's too big, which we'll talk about efficiencies and how you know, that works later on in the video, because heat pumps aren't as efficient in the cold so we will talk about that because it will come up the other thing bad actors did as part of installing heat pumps that were too small they weren't changing any of the radiators in the home so the radiators weren't big enough to keep the houses warm now i can hear some of the heat pump haters in the comments going heat pumps don't work in old houses yes they do it's all about design you can make a heat pump work in any situation it's all about how to design the house you might we have need bigger radiators, you may need a little bit of insulation, but in theory, they can work without insulation, you just need bigger and bigger radiators. Most people tend to pick the cheapest option to suffice the heat loss. So in other words, it's usually cheaper to put more insulation in than it is to put a much larger radiator in. And because of this, it all feeds down to how the system is going to work. Now I'm going to show you this book here because this book is amazing. If you're thinking about getting a heat pump or installing heat pump or want to learn more about heat pumps, it is a really good read. Now, a lot of the information in here might be a little bit too technical or over, you know, might be a bit dumbed down to you if you're a heating engineer already, but it has a lot of real fundamental practices about how heat pumps should be installed. But there's a really, really good little piece in here and it talks about 
radiators and, and heat and low flow temperatures. So in here, it's got a perfect example of high temperature. So think about the way a boiler works, but we'll talk about an undersized radiator, but a really high temperature. So you have a candle in a room. Now a candle in a room is a thousand Celsius. It's very, very hot to touch. It'll burn your hand. But if you put it in the middle of a room, that one candle isn't going to heat the room. But if you put a radiator in the room and you run it at 30 Celsius and it's a large radiator, that small large radiator will output way more heat into the room and warm the room up with a much lower flow temperature. And this is just how heat pumps work. The bigger the room, the bigger the radiator needed, the higher the heat loss, the bigger the radiator needed, but you can still run it at a very low temperature because the radiator is radiating more heat because it's got a larger area into that room. So we can run a we can run a rad at basically low the temperature. We can run it 30 Celsius, 35, 45, 50, 55, 60, 70 Celsius, 80 Celsius, maybe even with a boiler. But if we have a very small surface like a candle, it's not going to heat the room. If we have a very larger surface and run it lower, then we're going to heat the room. So this is basically the fundamental of how a heat pump works and how a boiler works. A boiler is basically using a smaller radiator but pumping out lots of heat to try and get it hot. And a heat pump works less hard, low and slow, but with a much larger surface area. Now before I mention the gas you operate is going to be depending on how cold or hot the heat pump can operate at. So basically how much heat can that gas extract? Now it's basically all gases, all, all liquids, all everything has a melting point, a, a point where it's a gas, a point where it's a solid. And we pick over here a gas called R290, also known as propane. It's a waste product of making petroleum gas. It is a very readable, very natural source of gas um, and very easily to find. It's not uh, manufactured in any kind of way. It is a naturally occurring gas. So it has a couple of benefits, but one of the benefits is that um, if it was released into the atmosphere, it has a very, very, very low CO2 impact compared to some of the other operating gas. Now, it also has an operating temperature of down to about minus 25 Celsius, which is way colder than we experience here in the UK, but there may be a more appropriate gas for someone else who may be living in Alaska or very cold parts of Russia. They will not pick this gas, they will pick another gas. We pick this gas for other parts of its property, which is it also has a max temperature of 52 Celsius that it can be stored at. All these temperatures are well within UK operating limits. Um, but the other thing with R290 is not only is it low carbon, not only is it all this, but we can also heat water up to 75 Celsius. That's the tested proportion of our propane R290. It can heat water, heat the water to, uh, to 75. Now, the cozy heat pump is only tested to 70 Celsius with the R290 gas on the central heating circuit, and it will heat the hot water circuit at 60 Celsius. But that's what Octopus have tested to, and it works. Now, I've also tested it to this on the coldest day of the year for me, which was minus 5.9 Celsius. My house stayed warm, and my hot water got to 60 Celsius, proving that Octopus know what they're talking about. Now, before I talked about how the heat pumps aren't as efficient in the cold. Now, we're going to get to that in a minute, but we have one last myth to bust. Now, the biggest issue with heat pumps not working is you, owners. People who get heat pumps or people who move into a house with a heat pump who don't know how they work. Heat pumps need to be operated in a certain manner, manner of fashion to work, to operate, to be within what they are designed to do. They have a design, they have a, an operation, they have a system the way they're supposed to work. And if you don't operate them the way they're supposed to be operated, they either won't warm the house up or they will cost you a lot more money to run. Now, I've done a whole series about how you should run your heat pump. Should you run it all the time? Should you turn it off and on? Should you only run it during Octopus Intelligent hours? Should you only run it during cozy hours? I've done a full video explaining about how to operate a heat pump, including 
what we refer to as setback. So basically we don't turn it off, we just drop the Celsius of the temperature down by about two or three Celsius. That's a quick short explanation of the full video, but go and check out that video on playlists under heat pumps and you can learn a bit more. Now, if you are thinking of getting a heat pump, remember evnick.com forward slash heat pump, fill your name and your email address, and we get to split a hundred pound when your heat pump uh, journey finishes. Now, heat pumps don't mind the cold, but in the cold, they might have to operate for longer than what you were used to with a boiler. For example, on the coldest day of the year, your heat pump might run continuously for 24 hours, even when you sleep, just to maintain that basic level of what your house setback is. So you don't really want your house dropping below 18 Celsius or below 15 Celsius if you prefer 18 Celsius when you're in, but you don't want it to drop below three or four Celsius of your comfort temperature. So it might need to run on the coldest day of the year 24 seven. Now that is also true of some people with boilers. But the difference is not turning it off and on during the night when you don't think you need it means that the house doesn't drop to say 10 Celsius and then has to work twice as hard to try and put that heat energy back in later. Because as it gets colder, heat, the more electricity goes in, but the same, almost the same amount of heat energy will come out if you run it continuously. If you're turning it off and on, more electricity will go in and more heat will have to come out, but even more electricity will have to go in to manage that heat loss. So just bear that in mind. Now heat pumps are about averages. That's why we look at the SCOP, which is the over seasonal adjusted efficiency for the whole year. So your SCOP is the percentage of efficiency. So SCOP of four means for every uh, four kilowatts of energy, uh, so, sorry, for every one kilowatt of energy in, you got four kilowatts of energy heat put out. Now, boilers can also work less efficiently in the winter. Combi boilers are tend to be around about the same efficiency all year round. That's why they were designed like that. But we've got to remember, your heat pump is going to be more efficient on some days, less efficient on other days, but it's the average over the year. And I also didn't get too worried about COP because COP is only one of the stories of what the cost of electricity is can change depending on what tariff you're on, which you can't do with gas. You can't change the hourly rate you're going to be paying for gas. You can only pay change maybe the day rate or the year rate or the six month rate. You have a lot more control of the where your electricity comes from, even solar or battery systems to make it even cheaper, or like I said, running different tariffs like Agile, Octopus Intelligent, or Cozy, where the electricity rate changes all the time and you can adjust your heat pump to absorb that cheaper, cheaper energy all the time and make it work cheaper. Now, like I said, I've been running my heat pump for about 12 months. That video is coming up soon, so make sure you click subscribe and that notification bell because there's some real good videos coming with me, with Octopus, about my heat pump, so make sure you don't miss that, them out. Now, if you want to understand why COP isn't that important, see this video I did about it here. And if you want to learn more about heat pumps, see that video here. Don't forget, evnick.com forward slash heat pump.